Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Walkthrough with me, Jamie Hoyle, and my guest, Carter the Power uh, from the Believe in Saints podcast. Carter, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Jamie, are you kidding me with that open? My goodness gracious, man. I I, I felt a lip, uh, to use a dad joke here, uh, <laughs> I felt a bolt uh, of energy <laughs> break <The> through. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I, I'm not BSing you. Like, well, did I grow up a Chargers fan? No. Like, but the Chargers are always a team that I always kind of liked. I mean, they just had all these really cool players. I'm glad you included the uh, lights out mm -hmm. on Merriman. But really, uh, you know, the Chargers and the Saints history is always going to be intertwined with uh, Drew Brees and obviously to a lesser extent, Darren Sproles. And uh, man, it's it's so cool. I've always been a big Antonio Gates fan. Always have been. Uh, like I, I, I was a pass rusher when I played, so I, I freaking loved me some Sean Merriman. So I always get excited when I see uh, the Chargers doing well, and uh, I was even more excited because I know you're you want me here to talk about the Saints. But you tell me your story of Charger fandom um, with your San Diego days. You still being in San Diego, and. Um, your connection to the team now so i'm really excited to be here with you and i, I could tell you take it seriously with the uh your 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 lit introduction i love it <laughs> that that uh that intro runs before every show we do and it gets me every time i love it yes um, good. Good. my partner gary got together i give him full credit for that he did a great job with it so you know anytime somebody new comes on the show that's the first thing they mention is my god that intro so yeah he killed it for sure yeah um so, you know, we're here to, to preview the Chargers Saints game. And uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I don't watch the Saints. Um, I don't have a lot of access to them outside yeah. of the NFL.com. Uh, so um, I know they started out hot and they've cooled off considerably over the last five games. So what, yeah. what in your opinion, what's going wrong? All right, maybe, maybe we should right. start with what's right because it, it, there's, it's an easier question. But what, what's, what's going wrong with – with the Saints, what what's leading to these this five game turnover or uh, loss streak, and what's going on? Yeah, so Jamie, let's start with uh, the the obvious, which is always the case with every single team: injuries. Right? It's been a very banged up Saints team. So Eric McCoy has been PFF's uh, best player on the Saints. He's been hurt. He won't be back to when they play the other Los Angeles team, the Rams, later in the season. And honestly, to me, that's been their biggest loss. I mean, the Saints' offensive line has really fell apart uh, since they started the season. Uh, Ruiz has, has had his ins and outs. He's a guard that's been really good for the Saints. And honestly, Jamie, you can make a very strong case that the two worst wide receiver units that were fielded this past week in the NFL were these two teams <laughs> right here. Uh you know, I obviously I I do a lot of SEC stuff, so I'm a believer in in Lad McConkey. But I mean, anyone could see that the Chargers wide receiver room versus Cardinals just wasn't up to snuff. And if a Chargers fan was watching this, guess what? The Saints wide receiver room this past week was worse than that. It just was. Uh, but you know, they might have Chris Olave back uh, for this next game. But the guy that's really unlocked this offense is. Rashid Shahid, man, he's been the guy that's opened up the Saints offense with his, uh, with his ability to stretch the field. And, of course, if you talk Saints football, you have to talk about their version of LaDainian Tomlinson, which is uh, Alvin Kamara, right? A.K., you know, Jamie, they, they were talking – bad about him this offseason. They were saying that the, the demise is here. His rush efficiency went down. Well, yeah, in a P. Carmichael offense that was atrocious last year, that is exactly 
what happened. Uh, for the Chargers fan watching this, uh, Brandon Staley, as bad as he was uh, towards the end of his tenure, uh, that's what the Saints offense is went through last year and is currently going through uh, with Dennis Allen. So the injuries have, have really hurt the Saints team, but they got some good news on a few guys, most notably Chris freaking Alave. Alave is a, a big favorite among Charger fans. I know there were a lot of guys who wanted him to wind up with the Chargers being from San Diego and growing up a Charger fan. Uh, people really wanted him to wind up here, so there was a lot of disappointment when he didn't. Um, yeah, and 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 I, and I'll be I'll be clear. I don't know for sure if he's going to come back. Obviously, this concussion thing is is something very serious. Uh, he's had concussion issues uh, in the past, but for the most part, uh, the Saints do feel better. Uh, not only him, but obviously saves our reason we mentioned a minute ago. Pete Werner, uh, who's one of the Saints' best linebackers, and Taysom Hill, who is the do-it-all, everything guy uh, for uh, the Chargers. I think most of your viewers are, are familiar with him. But, you know, they were th this was the most injured Saints roster they put out versus uh, the, the Broncos this past week. And more than likely, it will be Spencer Rattler at quarterback uh, for versus the Chargers this next week. Where is Derek Carr in his recovery? Is he... Is he getting close to coming back? Uh, it's one would like to think, as crazy as that sounds, because you know, before before the season, Jamie, everybody was wanting Spencer Rattler to be the guy anyway, and he did some really fancy things in the preseason. But Jamie, I do film studies of every Saints game. Uh, the defenses that he went up went up against were not only you know third and fourth stringers; it was also very static looks that he was able to dominate and. You know, versus the Broncos, not only did he struggle with protection and setting protections, he also struggled with fumbles, right? Uh, normally, when a quarterback is fumbling, it's a sign of bad ball security, but it's also – it could be a sign of the game is just moving a little too fast. So the Saints' turnovers were a massive issue, and uh, hopefully that does not continue versus Khalil Mack in this Chargers defense. So in terms of the Saints' offense, injuries notwithstanding – what do they do well, and what do they struggle with? What what can Chargers fans expect from their offense? Yeah, so what we've seen in the NFL, and you're probably familiar with this when you go up against uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, are 12 personnel and 13 personnel packages, one running back and two tight end and three tight end sets. And to start the season, the Saints were probably the best at deploying those packages because their personnel kind of fit it, right? The Saints most know Jawan Johnson um, as you know their best tight end, but Foster Moreau, who's a Louisiana native, overcame cancer, used to be in the AFC West with the Raiders, has come over and done a really good job at that second tight end, and then Taysom Hill as a third, you know, Swiss Army knife tight end. And they've done a really good job, you know, using a lot of these wide zone concepts and play action, actioning out of it. And in those first two weeks, you saw how great the offense looked. The Saints were amongst the NFL leaders in play action rate. Right? The Saints were amongst the NFL leaders and pre-snap motion, and it's still tried to do these things over the past couple of weeks, but it just hasn't been as effective because, quite frankly, they haven't had Derek Carr. Now, let's be fair, Jamie. Derek Carr did start playing a little worse uh, after starting off so hot, in particular in the Chiefs game where he got hurt, which, once again, if you are an AFC West fan, you know for certain that Derek Carr sucks versus the Chiefs. <laughs> uh, that is... That is that continued. That was his first, like, really, really, really atrocious game. And um, then it lended itself into Spencer Rattler, uh, who looked okay versus Tampa Bay, but he looked atrocious uh, this past week. And it was an emotional day because they were putting Drew Brees into the Saints Hall of Fame. So, look, the Saints offense, very play-action heavy. They're going to try and run the football with Alvin Kamara, but his production has gone down. His usage... And, and carry numbers have gone down just a little bit. And it all goes back to that really, really, really banged up offensive line. Now, you take a look at this, you know, as far as playing the Chargers, who I don't know about you, Jamie. Uh, I, I felt the Chargers defensively played good enough to win uh, versus the Cardinals. Would, would you agree with that? Uh, in some respects, yes. I think what concerned me, though, was they didn't stop the run, which has been their hallmark all season. Um, okay. They let James Conner get to the edge a lot. They missed a lot of tackles. There were a lot of bad angles. Their interior defensive line got chewed up pretty bad. So 
there were some issues there that I wouldn't have expected against the Cardinals in the running game, uh, but they okay. were able to bend, not break, and keep themselves keep the offense in the game and give themselves a chance to win. Yeah, and you know when I did my first film study on the Chargers uh, today on on my main job, which is Power Hour NFL, and. You know, I mostly focused on on Herbert, but you know, I, I went through and I looked at Kyler snaps, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, you, you are right." James Conner got going. I think he had like ninety yards rushing, and then mm-hmm. you know, at, at the end with the the reception, breaking the tackle, that sucked, obviously. But you know, Kyler made like a freakish play, and outside of that, you know, you shut down Marvin Harrison. You didn't allow McBride to go off. He only had like fifty or something yards. I felt pretty good about that. And, you know, I felt Jamie offensively. Uh, Justin Herbert did some really good things. I And and I, I, at the risk of pissing off your audience, I've always <laughs> kind of been more of a Herbert skeptic than a lot of others in the film community. Now, I wouldn't necessarily put myself up there with like Brian Baldinger or Kurt Warner or anything like that. But – I feel like at, at times Herbert likes some creativity. He could be a little stat- static. I mean, is that fair? I, I, I see some. Uh, I see. I see some thoughts bolting through uh, that 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 wonderful brain of yours. Jamie. <laughs> I I think the lack of creativity has a lot more to do with the play callers and the design of the offense okay. than it does with Herbert. Um, you know, Staley and Lombardi the last couple years were really, really bad for him. Um, I think they basically coached a lot of the aggressiveness out of him. Uh, and they, they coached him into just check the ball down, just get the ball out, check it down. Don't take any chances, take what the defense gives you. And it made things much more difficult on Herbert. And you don't see even last night, it took until the fourth quarter until the last drive to run a bootleg for him. He's very mobile. He throws the ball really well off platform and he's always seven to ten, 10 steps deep in the pocket, holding the ball, waiting for somebody to come open against an off, behind an offensive line that, frankly, has two NFL caliber offensive linemen on it. So um, yeah. they ask him to be Superman a lot, and that's why they've been trying to lean into the running game this year to take some of that off of his plate. Um, but no, I don't think it's – I think we've seen creativity from Herbert in terms of making you know off-schedule throws, off-platform throws – not as much the last few years, but I think that has a lot to do with the line he's playing behind and okay. the way that the plays are being called. Yeah, and, and and like I say, I don't I don't follow the Chargers as closely as 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 you do and, and your viewers. Uh, I've always just kind of felt that way. I've always kind of felt like he was in that next tier and not in the upper echelon. But obviously, he is very good, and obviously, his weapon situation this year is just not it's just not an NFL starting caliber wide receiver room. And I, I will tell you this, Jamie, there are a lot of Charger fans that hate me because I am a huge Malik Neighbors fan. And <laughs> I was and I know I know you you have discussed this 12 months out of the year or, or for the last year and a half. Right. It's a penisal Jamar chasing, but in reverse. Right. Yep. So I, I am I'm, I, I'm such a big Malik Neighbors guy and I would have done whatever because he is the perfect receiver to pair with uh, Justin Herbert. Their skills yep. are, are very similar. So, yep. uh, and look, I, uh, Joe Alt's been fantastic. I mean, Joe Alt's been like, tra- like very, very, very good. Uh, but, you know, th- th- I don't want to go down that, that rabbit hole because I know your viewers, th- do your viewers debate this all the time? Oh, all the time. We have a Discord connected with the podcast and it's a okay. constant topic of conversation. It right. comes up in almost every podcast. Um but I mean, it's it's a fair topic, right? They had potentially an elite weapon at wide receiver, guy who's playing and producing really well despite having no quarterback with the Giants. Yeah. Um, and you take a right tackle. And right. I, I was a neighbor's guy going into the draft. I thought they were going to take him. I thought, I mean, I love the guy. He was, I, know, I, I first noticed him watching Keishon Butte the previous year okay. getting ready for the draft and I'm watching Butte going, why am I watching this guy? Neighbors is the guy neighbors is the guy that I want next year. So I, know uh, I was on him a year in advance. I love that kid. And I just thought he would have been perfect. And yeah. I was not happy when they took Joe Alt because you get rid of Mike Williams, you get rid of Keenan Allen, you get rid of Gerald Everett. It's like, okay, well we need to build, rebuild the weapons. Let's go get neighbors at five. It just seemed like a slam dunk move. But right. I mean, you know, as much as I didn't like the pick at the time, 
all it's been great. Yeah. He's been, I mean, when he's been on the field, he's been amazing. He and he and Slater are great bookend tackles. And uh, in terms of when you bring in Jim Harbaugh and you bring in Joe Hortiz, you know how they want to build the roster. And if that's how they want to build the roster, it's kind of hard to argue with them. So I, I kind of just went with the, I, the, I wanted, I've wanted Harbaugh since they hired Staley. I've been pounding the table for Harbaugh, Harbaugh for years. Okay. So I just kind of went with the, you know what, this, okay. this is my guy. And if this is what he wants, he knows what he's doing. So I'm going to have to trust him. So got to yeah, trust man. they'll build out that wide receiver room in time. Yeah. I've really enjoyed Jamie. I'm not going to lie. You're, you're a really good host. Like oh, I do so you. many like appearances on, a, on other shows and stuff like that. I've really enjoyed uh, this conversation. As you can tell, I, I really do love the, the, the history of the chargers. Um, if you don't mind, before I share like how I feel about the saints, defense yeah. going up against this offense i'm gonna give you a, a little bit of an exclusive here okay okay i've never shared this on a charger show before i think i shared it once i do a football card show on the no offseason.com network so i was blasted drunk hammered <laughs> at uh circa casino and circa is a great place have you ever been to 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 circa in, in, in vegas mm -hmm. jamie okay yep. all right so there's a steakhouse in the bottom of it called Barry's like Barry's prime or, or, or something like that. And I was, I was there for a bachelor's party and I, I was just there a few weeks ago and I was just on v uh, not too long ago. So I love Cirque. I love the culture. Sports betting is a big deal to me. And I'm leaving Barry's prime. And, and this was, you know, when you're on a bachelor's party, there's always one night where you go the absolute hardest. And this was that night. And as I was walking out, I see, 13 massive human beings coming down this escalator. There, there's an escalator. Uh -huh. like, what, what the hell is this? And then I see it was Justin Herbert taking his offensive lineman out to a steak dinner. Um, and that was, I, I don't think I've ever read that that was public. And this was a few years ago. Right. Okay. Uh, so I know Herbert has a really good reputation, uh, but, you know, he is like just the quietest guy, but I always wanted to wait to whichever Charger show I'd ever go on the first time. <laughs> uh, I would like to think, because normally that's how it works, right? The, the quarterback takes his offensive line mm -hmm. after dinner. Uh, I really do think, speaking to someone else I trust in the league, that Justin Herbert has that one-two, right? He really wants to make this work. Mm -hmm. And I understand, and, and tell me if I'm wrong or, or, or not on this, like some Charger fans don't like that he's so private. Is, is that fair? Uh, or, or, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't seen too much of that. I mean, I, I think that, you know, they went from rivers who was just gregarious and outgoing right, and right, right. had so much personality and never stopped talking to Herbert, who has been, I'm just, I don't want to say stoic, but I guess reserved would be a good way yeah. to put it. Yeah. Um, with the last two coaches, and I, I think part of that might have just been him getting his footing in the NFL, realizing that everybody loved Philip Rivers and just kind of taking his time to to build himself up with the um, with the locker room. Yeah. Um, but he started to show more personality okay. this year with Harbaugh. They seem to have a really close relationship and you can kind of see in clips of them in practice and, no. and pressers and locker room and stuff with they're joking around with each other and um it's starting to come out a little bit more. I think he's starting to get a little bit more comfortable in his skin. Yeah, I hope so, because that showed me a lot that a young quarterback uh, would do that. I was around the playoff time as well. So I would guess this would be if if I'm, I got to put my timeline together here, I would guess it would have been like a, a week or so after the Raiders loss uh, in, in week 17. I, I think okay. I, I, I think that w I, it, I'd have to get my years correct, but it was the first wild card weekend when this happened. Okay. So uh, the fact that that happened directly after the season showed some leadership. Now mm -hmm. he might not have been that one to organize it, but normally if it's just a quarterback in the offensive lineman, I remember uh, seeing Herbert, but that's not who I freaked out about. It was a, uh, one of the offensive line, I think it was Slater. I think I yelled out Slater. So I, w <laughs> I really wasn't blitz. Like I was, <laughs> I, I remember my buddy telling me like, dude, we just saw like Justin Herbert. And the and what's funny about it, Jamie, is I, I'm obviously a huge Burrow guy, right? Like a, a, I'm an LSU YouTuber, mm -hmm. uh, and I also do Saint stuff, whatever. And like with Herbert and Burrow, there's always you know yin and yang kind of thing mm -hmm. going. And, and of course, Burrow's had more 
success, uh, and especially in terms of the playoffs. But that doesn't mean I, I dislike Justin Herbert, right? right? I'm just not like – I just don't think he – is like this elite, elite, elite tier quarterback. But I don't think at the same time we can figure that out just based off of, off of what he has at skill positions, right? The Jalen Rager play last time was just a perfect way to describe how this Charger skill position room has been since right uh, uh, since Keenan Allen and, and the QJ disaster and all of that. But, Jamie, I have hope for all Chargers fans that are out there the Saints defense has been a disaster. Okay. <laughs> been a disaster. Okay. My favorite player to ever lace up any pair of cleats is Tyron Matthew. When he is dropping bread basket interceptions, that shows you that things aren't meant to be for the Saints this season. And Tyron's played overall pretty fine. You know, he started off really hot with all the turnovers. But Jamie, this has been the big issue for the Saints. They're making things easy. So easy on the other team's offense, right? Guys running wide open. You know, you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game. Yes, the Bucs have probably, you know, top five, top 10 skill set players in, mm-hmm. in the NFL when they're healthy. They guys running wide open underneath throws, sloppy tackling. That has been the case over the past couple of weeks. And Jamie, this defense isn't that bad. So when you start to see those things, what normally that could indicate is this unit is sick and tired of the coaching staff, right? This unit doesn't believe anymore in the message. And the demoralizing play of the season was week three, Philadelphia Eagles, chance to go 3-0. and And on a third and 16 with no uh, – there, there was no A.J. Brown. Devonta Smith got hurt in that game. And Lane Johnson got hurt in that game. So the three best players on the Eagles offense all got hurt. And on a third and 16, a shallow drag on a mesh concept to a tight end went for 70 yards because the Saints defenders (laughs) ran into each other. Okay. So this defense, based on how they've played over the past couple of weeks, it's not just the fact that they've been bad. It's just they can't do anything. They can't stop the run. Guys are running through wide open gaps in the run game. So look, J.K. Dobbins started the season well with a couple of 100-yard games. Obviously, the production hadn't been quite there, but he's still playing really well. This could be the game where you see another Hondo uh, game from him. And this could be a game. I understand the Chargers are a little fatigued at a semi fihoko experience up to this point, but it, 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 I really don't think with the way the Saints defense is playing that it really matters, right? If you come out with a competent game plan, I'm not going to believe in the Saints defense until I actually see it again. So I give a struggling Chargers offense the upper hand going into this game. Well, I hope you're right. I mean, they've shown some signs at times of breaking out. Um, and then it always seems like something derails them. Um, right. You know, the Steeler game, they came out throwing the ball early. They were hot. It looked like Herbert was going to have a 300 plus yard game and throw for a few touchdowns. And, um, and then Slater and Alt and Herbert all get hurt and everything comes to a screeching halt. Uh, they get off to a good start passing the ball and moving the ball against chiefs screeching halt in the second half. Um, last week, or I, I should say this week against the Cardinals, you know, they threw the ball well, but they couldn't run the ball and they, they had a hard time protecting Herbert. So it's it's always something, and it just seems like I thought I thought we were past this hiring. I figured hiring Harbaugh would be past this whole charging thing, right? But <laughs> they they just find ways to make things so hard on themselves. I mean, I watched film on the Cardinals last week, and I put out a tweet, and I said, "Here's my take on this Cardinals defense: They don't cover, they don't tackle, they don't rush the quarterback, they don't blitz." And they don't do anything well. The Chargers should be able to do whatever they want. And then the Chargers can't score a touchdown. So yeah. it's like what they got bullied by one of the worst defensive groups in the league. That yeah. defensive line is trash. And they pushed the Chargers offensive line around the whole game. They got, I mean, they got smacked in the mouth. And they didn't have a response for it. So hopefully they have a response for it this week and they have an aggressive game plan. And maybe this can be a get right game for them. 
Because yeah. they just need something to go right on offense for for four full quarters. Because that's the other thing is they haven't played, they really haven't played four full quarters of football on offense yet. Right. And Jamie, I, I'm uh, I'm very lucky to have been able to build something at Power Hour NFL just covering all these teams. I did once again my first ever Chargers video. Guess what? I hope you guys lose this weekend to my Saints. All right. <laughs> but The Kansas City rain has to stop. It does. We're it's all tired of, of them. I'm I'm sick and tired of them. I'm sick of it. I, I've I've had it up to here with with the Chiefs. With I mean, they're playing Sky Moore, and Sky Moore is the worst NFL player. The Chiefs are playing ten versus eleven, and they're still winning. They're still winning. I don't know how the hell they're doing it. Uh, well, I do. Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes are just madmen. But man, I I'm sick of it. So. I am rooting like hell for you guys. I know you're no one's going to catch them now in the AFC West, but I I need Herbert to be good, like because I can't stand this Mahomes BS. I I dude I can't I I can't I can't I just can't. Chris Jones too damn good, right? Tore y'all up a few weeks ago, right? If he didn't play, I would have won that game. But damn, I'm so sick of him. I'm so sick of him. You're not the only one, my friend. You are not the only one. I'm sick and tired of them. I'm tired of hearing about every little no look backhanded flip pass that Mahomes makes for three for a three yard gain. Oh my God! Look at the throw, from Mahomes. Just give me a break. I mean, every throw he makes, every every move he makes in the pocket is national news. Uh, it's so tiresome. And then you get now on top of that, you get. They're finally down in a game. They're struggling. It looks like they're going to lose, and they're getting away with pass interference calls in the end zone, or they're getting away with holding calls at key moments. Refs are throwing flags and picking them up for them. It's like, can we can we just have a level playing field, please? Yeah, yeah. just <laughs> for once. Okay, like the, the Bengals game on the 50-50 pass interference call. Just, just have it go the Bengals way one time. Yep. All right. And I understand like my burrow and chase bias are, are showing here, but uh, I, w- I want to say thank you, Jamie, uh, for having me on. Uh, I want, I want to also let you know something crazy is as a football card collector, uh, we do rankings all the time of which cards actually, which teams uniforms actually look best on cards. And I've always said the chargers, I know I, I know you're probably not a football card guy. I see you have some mem- memorabilia back there. Um, but Chargers cards have always looked good. I know that, like, that's my personal opinion. Not everyone agrees with that because uh, I am a Breeze collector and I do have some Breeze Charger cards. Mm-hmm. But I have always loved the Charger uniforms. I, dude, I have always freaking loved. Uh, I prefer their old ones to the new ones, but. You like, like the old navy blue? Yes. I love that. I, I some people call it boring. I know a lot of people like the light blue, powder blue. Yeah, yep. yeah, and and those those are good. I I really did like the navy blue. I thought it was interesting. Uh, what, what say you? Do you like the new uniforms better than the old ones? I I, I like both. I mean, I grew up on the navy blue, right? So I I really enjoy the navy blue. I I mean, I don't know. To me, those are kind of iconic. Those are the jerseys that yes that say I played in. So. Yeah, and that that was my guy. So yeah, no, I I love the navy blue. The the powder blue are nice. They get a little bit too much run though. I think the ones that yeah. I don't like are the the powder blue with the yellow pants. Not a fan of those. Yeah, no, yeah, it's too much. It's 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 too XFL. Uh, it, it is a little too much. But um, but yeah, man, do you need anything else for me? Do I do I need to give you a prediction or anything crazy? Um, if you want to throw out a prediction, let's go for it. All right. Here is my prediction. All right, everybody lock in. Jim Harbaugh will be fired by the end of the year. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, look, um, Los Angeles is is solid team. Okay. Uh, you got the early bye week, and, you know, you, you do worry about the Saints because they have played a lot of football, and they have to play three games in 11 days, and now got to play this Chargers team that can run the football and all those things. But give me my Saints, and I'll bounce back, baby. The who that <laughs> nation is going to teach the Chargers what it's like to have a team that's actually won a Super Bowl. Let's freak – I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> when the, wait, the Chargers, wait, the Chargers have not won a Super Bowl, have they? No, they haven't. Okay. They've only yes, been to one. My point still remains the same. I was like, wait, hold on. Did the Fouts win slow stuff? Okay. You are no. right. I probably should have known that. But truth is, Saints aren't playing well, but I am going to go on my Saints. Final score, 21 to 20. Give me your prediction, Jamie. Give it to me hot, baby. I I think the Chargers win this game. Uh, I think they okay. force three turnovers. Okay. Including two sack fumbles by Khalil Mack. Oh! Oh! Khalil Mack! Yep. Okay. And I think the Chargers win this game. I think they finally put some things together on offense. I'm going to say they they win the game 27-13. Mm. So 27-13. Just check the point spread is seven, right? So what is it this year? What's the trend? Uh, like the big point spreads have, have, have not done a good job covering this year, or is it the opposite? I don't know. I said- I would, it's probably the big point spreads. Yeah, right, that's right, my yeah. guess because NFL games are always close. Yeah. So, uh, dang, Jay, I just looked. I just, I hadn't looked at any of the point spreads for for this week yet. The totals at thirty nine and a half. Oh, this might be an ugly, ugly, ugly game. Uh, but yeah, my Saints are gonna probably get destroyed. Huh? <laughs> huh? 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 Uh, but. No, I, I, and I, I'm being off that. I, I really have. I'm not, I, I'm not a Chargers like a fan, like I told you at the beginning, but I've always liked the team. I've always liked Philip Rivers. I mean, they made the NFL so much fun. And my favorite thing about the Rivers era Chargers teams is that they might not have always been elite. They might not have never been bad, but you want to know what they were entertaining. Yeah. I could see where you would think they were entertaining from the outside looking in, but being the inside looking in, they were freaking painful for a lot of those seasons. Teams that should have won a lot more games than they did, teams that should have won playoffs, getting you know screwed by their coaches, making stupid mistakes at the worst moments. Uh, I'm a Padres fan, and I'm a Chargers fan, and I've been through a lot of shit with my teams. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> it's been, there we go. My yeah. fandom has been interesting. <laughs> Well, there you go. Shout out Trevor Hoffman. Shout out the Tony. I like the Tony Gwynn jersey in the back. But, Jamie, if you ever need me to chat Chargers, NFL, or anything, let me know. You're a great guy, man, and we'll talk soon, man. I will. Thank you so much, Carter. I really appreciate you coming on. Do you want to tell everybody where to find you? Yeah, at Carter the Power. The podcast is a Believe uh, in Saints. But if you want to – I don't know if you're a big film guy or not, Jamie, but if you want to see my uh, Justin Herbert film study that we dropped today – um, go to Power Area NFL. It's it's an outsider's viewpoint. I'm also not a fan of the Cardinals, so I didn't really have any allegiances uh, going into uh, the game. I really hope this Harbaugh thing works out because I really do mean I hate I, I do not need the Chiefs to to just run this division for uh, the next decade. But thank you so much, Jamie, and uh, we'll talk soon, brother. All right, thank you so much, Carter. All right, cheers, cheers.